you take your seats, Alex. Welcome to church this morning. But 
The very fact that when you, your thoughts or your behaviour does not line up with who you are in the spirit and you don't feel good about that, that is a sure sign that you are of the spirit of God. And it is very, very encouraging because only those who are not of the spirit of God sit in peace and do things contrary to the spirit of God at peace. They do it at peace. They have no conviction about it. So, furthermore to my questions, how did you actually want to live these holidays? Victoriously? With the Lord? Disciplined? Winning? What was that? Loving? Keep it coming? Now listen, everything you just said, that is because you're born again. The fact that you want to live winning, victoriously, with the Lord, loving, joyful, shows me that you're born again. Because your wants come from who you truly are. Your deepest wants and your deepest desires, they come from who you really are. So the deepest wants and desires of the unsaved, of those who aren't filled with the Spirit of God, is to sin. The Bible says that their thoughts, our thoughts before we were saved, are evil continually from our hearts, from our spirits. So what came out of us is, I want to sin. I can't wait to sin. I think about sin. And sin is just anything that's opposed to the Spirit of God and the way God does things. But the Christian wants every day to love God, to love people, to rejoice, to do the Word, to just be who they truly are. They want that. And even talking about that fills them with joy. Talking to other people about that fills them with joy because that's who they really are. What lights you up shows who you really are. So I'll find like, you know, Rye is such a sweetheart. Those of you who know me, you know. Rye reads to me to get me to sleep. I'm still such a little kid. He literally reads me to sleep. And um, so he's read hundreds and hundreds of books to me helping me get to sleep. Because um, I, I am a little bit of an insomnia. I don't sleep much at all. And so his voice puts me to sleep. But the, some of the books he's read to me over these holidays, I'm trying to go to sleep. But some of the scenes, the people are worshipping God in the scenes. Or they're talking about God. And I, I can't help it. Because I'm born again, my spirit starts lining up and coming awake. I'm like, okay, we need to read some sermon books. So I can read the fucking glory in my sermon. Walking asleep. Because we choose you know, stories written by Christian authors to support them and, and because they're invigorating. But, um, but it's not good to actually put you to sleep because the Christian is invigorated just talking about God. <laughs> So the way you wanted to live these holidays is because you're actually born again. And you want, when you're born again, you want what the Spirit wants. But how can we get the two to agree? So what you really want, what you've said you really wanted for these holidays, and you've still got another week to live this out. In fact, you've got the rest of 2024. In fact, you've got the rest of your lives to live this out. Because today we're going to be talking about how... To walk in the Spirit consistently. And it's not a far off thing. It's not a hard thing at all. It's instinctive. And that is what you're going to find. But um, we're going to talk about how to get the two to agree. So from what your born again Spirit wants to do and what you just told me it wants to do to what your daily reality actually is. So living in the Spirit rather than living after the flesh. Amen? Does anyone think that sounds great? All right. Um, Now, I've just got to warn you that um, I am going to preach for a decent period of time right now. So um, if you need to go to the phone buggy, go to the phone buggy. Okay. If you need to get a drink, get a drink. We will take a pause. I don't know. Uh, it's not like I'm going to be preaching until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. But we are going to go for it. Okay. So, um, because this is a very important topic. And we were going to do like a word fest. We were, we were discussing about maybe just doing a... Um, I used to love, as a new Christian, I still love to this day, starting the year with a conference. Like, um, I love it. And I used to go to conferences in January. And I would fast for the whole conference. So three days. 
because I just wanted to think about nothing but God. Like, I would just fast, and as soon as the music, I was just up the front. I just forgot about the kids. I forgot about everyone. I'm like, this is me and God. And I would just get drenched in God, and I would come so hungry for God that I would literally be sitting in meetings. It's like I could feel like a mist. Like someone was just spraying a mist because I could just feel God. But... Whoever draws near to God, God draws near to you. So if you want God this morning, then for starters, you probably shouldn't have stayed up till 2 a.m. last night. Because that shows your hunger for God, the decisions you make on Saturdays, right? So I make choices on Saturdays for Sunday. Okay? I make, well, you know, I choose whatever. It's going to make my relationship with God the best. But you do what you need to do to be able to hear from God this morning. All right, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. How to walk and live in the Spirit. All right. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, actually, just before I read the next one, because we're going to be in Romans 8 and Galatians 5 for the majority of this teaching, so feel free to have a a hand in both or a bookmark in both. But I just want to say, what you said about your holidays is what the Apostle Paul spoke about in the chapter just before this, which we will look at shortly. But in Romans chapter 7, Paul basically says, um, I just want to live from my spirit. My spirit just loves God. My spirit just wants to live victoriously and wants to win and wants to love everybody. But there is this situation going on. And it's called the flesh. Yeah. And he talks about the flesh. And he says, in my flesh, there's no good thing. But in my inward man, I just love God. And in my flesh, what do I do? And he says, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then we go into Romans 8. And we're going to cover all of that. And we're going to cover how Paul told us he discovered how to live continuously in the spirit. Come on. So Galatians 5 and verse 16 says, someone's music's come off, so when you get back up here, remember that. Galatians 5 and verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So that can sound all spirit until the end of this word, when it won't sound spirit no more. But basically, there's your answer right there. You don't want to fulfill the lusts of your flesh. You don't want to. You told me that you did things, you thought things, you felt things so far these holidays that didn't line up with who you are and you didn't feel good about it, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so you want to know how not to do that? There's yeah. your answer right there. Yeah. Walk in the Spirit. So the question is then, how the heavens do I actually walk in the Spirit? How do I actually do that, Paul? Thank you for telling me what to do. How do I do yeah. it? How do I walk in the Spirit? How do I live in the Spirit? Okay, uh, Romans 8. What will first to understand what walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit is, let's just talk briefly what walking and living in the flesh looks like and what that means. Romans 8 and verse 9 says, You, he's talking to the Christians in Rome, you Christians are not in the flesh. Okay, I just want to clarify this because I have never heard. Um, Christians talk about being in the flesh until I arrived at a certain ministry. Prior to that, I was already 10 years saved and I'd I'd never heard that before. Um, I've read it in the Bible talking about being in the flesh, but I'd never heard Christians say, I'm just in the flesh today. And it was so common then to say that in that ministry. Every time someone was having a bad day, they'd say, I'm in the flesh. That I found everybody was just saying. In fact, I said to Ryan, I'd, I'd never heard that said so much in my life. In fact, I heard more people saying I'm in the flesh than I heard them saying I'm walking in the spirit. And it actually concerned me because, in fact, I was probably nearly 13 years old in the Lord. Um, For someone who'd been that long in the Lord to hear Christians constantly saying I'm in the flesh, I'm in the flesh, something said on about it. But it was what was said all the time. And and so it just became part of the lingo. Oh, I'm just in the flesh today. Oh, I was just in the flesh at that time. I was just in the flesh. So when I've gone to really study how to teach you, because I don't focus on that I'm in the flesh. I focus on that I'm in the spirit. Because whatever you focus on is what you walk after. It's what becomes big. It's what dominates your thinking. But as I've gone to study about being in the flesh, I found it's actually a tentor anyways. (laughs) So we can look at that, right? The Bible says here, you are not in the flesh. 
Okay, yeah. this is talking to Christians. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about walking after the flesh in a minute. But the Bible says, Christians, you are not. Say, I am I not. Am I am not. In the flesh. Yeah. Thank you, because that's what the Bible says. Yeah. And the clause for that is, if so be that the Spirit of God, of God dwells in you. In other words, if you're born again. If the Spirit of God is in you, you are not in the flesh. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you are not a Christian in this place, you can be today. But if you are not, the Spirit of God is not dwelling in your spirit at this time. Which means you are in the flesh, according to the Bible. That literally means... You are a soul. We're three-part beings, Brian's taught us, the Bible teaches us, the Thessalonians. We are spirits, right? That is what's eternal. So when someone dies, you listen to all these people with their death experiences. When they die and they continue living, so they say they come out of their body, they're looking at their body. They come out of the hospital, they're looking at the hospital. They begin to head towards the heavenly, so forth. Okay? What is happening there? Their body's still lying on the operating table. Who they really are has come out of their body. Right? Yeah. Because we are spirits. Yeah. We have a spirit tent, a spirit vehicle that gets us around on this earth and that manifests, is the word the Bible says, that we would say expresses. So our spirit needs something to give expression to it. Otherwise, if I came out of my spirit right now, my body would have no expression. It would just stay still. My spirit would be active and animated over here, but it's only because my spirit is possessing my body that you are able to see me animated. As soon as my spirit leaves my body, my body will drop on the floor dead, okay? So unless I'm illegally coming out of my body through astral projection, which is extremely dangerous because it opens you up to the demonic and the demonic can sever the cord that attaches the spirit to a body. So if you're doing that illegally. So do not practice astral projection. Instead, be filled with the spirit, okay? Um, If you are currently practicing that, please feel free to talk to me after the service. So, but I've had friends nearly die doing that. So be very, very careful. Um, anyways, let's get back to it. So we are spirits yeah. and we have a soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions. And we live in a body, right? Somebody who is in the flesh is somebody whose spirit is yet dead. Okay. Their spirit is separated from the life of God. So because they have not the life of God, the Spirit of God in their spirit, their spirit is literally dead. It's just filled with sin. So they are dominated by their soul and their body. That's where they live from. So everything they do is out of their thoughts, feelings, emotions, or the desires of their physical body. That's it. They don't have the Spirit of God in them. They literally are living just like meat (laughs) with some emotions and stuff. Um, that's the way we were, the Bible says, before we had Christ. We were just following after, just carnal. The carnal means fleshly or just of the body, just temporal. That's the desires we were following all the time. Because you had not the Spirit of God. So this verse says here, when you've got the Spirit of God, you are not in the flesh. Okay? So Christians are not to say... I am in the flesh. That is literally saying today, I am unsaved. Wow. Today, I don't have the Spirit of God in me. Oh, sorry, it's not that easy to get rid of. Yeah, amen. So the spirits of those, let's turn to Ephesians for a, for a wee minute. Ephesians 2. 